do we get action? That was action. Oh, that's action. Thing. Cool. All right. I'm doing action later. <laughs> we don't want to know about yeah. your action. So, yes, welcome to uh, Awkward Beer Reviews again. Um, you probably know that I'm Greg by now. This is Phil, who's the other half of Bureaucracy, and a complete bastard. Um, and hey. this is Graham, who makes him look like a nice guy. <laughs> uh, all three of us judged in the National Homebrew Competition recently, so we're fresh and ready to rip on some beer. Although, um, with one of these, I doubt we'll be ripping on it, but you never know with the other two. Um, also making a debut today will be uh, my lovely wife, Alex, who's going to bring me the bottles of beer, just because I like, you know, making women subservient in videos. That's what they should be doing. Now, I'm glad we let you it's out of the kitchen. because it is true. <laughs> <laughs> now, remember, if you don't do it right, you need the phone book and the rubber hose. Right, first beer, please. Is it open? Did you open? No, no, no. I'll beat her for that later. You're, you're the manager. All right. Everyone got their glasses ready? So we have here Monteith's Apricot Wheat. Now, some of you may know I've had my fights with DB in the past, but honestly, if they make good beer, I can't wait to try it. Mr. Phil, you get the honours. I don't know if we're supposed to swirl this. It might be a, might have some yeast in it. You can't tell. Yeah, looks like it might have on the bottom actually. But cover up the alt beer. And uh, just because I know that we've always beer nerds are always watching this, I've got two things to point out. Yes, we know we're sitting in the sun, and we know it's a race against skunking beer. And there's also a glass here celebrating uh, li uh, D Lion, Kirin, whatever you want to call them, takeover of Lion Red. Lion Red? Of Emerson's. <laughs> I think you've had too much already. Rich. I think I haven't started. Oh, and I've got a good clean glass there. I really should have washed that before I used it. I want a dramatic value of the Lion logo. Right, guys. Smells like muesli bars. It really, really does. Yeah. Apricot, Apricot muesli, muesli bars. bars. Yeah. Mm. What's weird is that it also smells like the yogurt that you get on them as well. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure that should be the case. What do you reckon? It's really big canned apricot uh, with the muesli bar and the, like you say, the yogurt mm. on top. Candy so. and sweet. And oh, yeah. You know, it's not as terrible as, as I was expecting it. I'd enjoy a few pints of that. I don't think I... Well, I enjoy the strong word, but... <laughs> you just don't want to give credit where it's due. <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. <laughs> the the flavour's not as strong as the, as the aroma, which I think is, is a big help, because yeah. you that big, awful, bloody smelling... It smells like it's going to be really <laughs> cloying, <laughs> yeah, eh? Yeah. Right, but it's not. It's actually um, no, it's a little light, a little refreshing. Yeah. I look forward to this going on tap at our local, actually, as it, as it no doubt will. Uh, <laughs> short order. So... Right, well, we're going to finish this one off. Do we have anything else to say about it? It's not interesting, but it's not terrible. Hmm. <laughs> I think that's mine. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 to me, it's just a yeah, very light, very just about flavourless. You can tell it's sort of apricot if you didn't smell it, but that's about it, really. Yeah. Yep. And I was expecting it to be cloyingly sweet, but yeah. it's not. Awesome, and you can follow this through. Oh, hi. <laughs> <coughs> so we're back again, and our glasses are slightly emptier. By that I mean completely empty. Um, now we've got the next one that I found at our local supermarket, which is a barrel-aged porter, which I believe used to be called Porter Noir, but there were trademark issues. Um, oh, the irony. Oh, the irony. A deliciously dark beer conditioned in American oak Pinot Noir barrels, meticulously monitored to achieve optimum balance of oak and Pinot, overlaid with the rich, multi dark flavours of the porter. Racked off <laughs> and filtered with a final flourish of dry hops to add a slight edge. Perfect for that moment when you sit down to a Sunday roast. Nice work, Tony Mercer Brewer. Well, it's not Sunday, it's but... No, no, but that's alright. We can have a Saturday afternoon roast and hope it's not of Monteith's. Yeah, it's a up quite nicely, isn't it? Yeah, it sounds good. I'll start with, um, with Graham this time, since he's always just so left out over here. We are expecting big and rich though, it says on the bottle. I'm thinking of it pale. Yeah. Glass. Porter? Hmm. Yeah. Brown ale and porter, but maybe the oak stole the colour. Yeah. <laughs> Looks a bit thin. Yeah, it does a bit. Uh, come here, assistant wife, you might want to finish that. I should mention Phil's wife Beth is on the camera too. Um. White. <coughs> eh? What? I said hi. Oh, hi. I thought you said wife. <laughs> <laughs> As if. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty pale. I get a uh, 
struck Mitch. Yeah, definitely. Like it's very strange. Unpleasant. Definitely that um, dirty DBE is doing its work. Mm. We had a few of these in the homebrew competition. Did you get any of that particular fault? One or two, yeah. I remember that were. Yeah, we had a run of them. It's actually, you know, strangely appropriate that it's kind of guy at the moment and there's been people letting off fireworks all the time. It smells like one's fallen in. Actually, it's funny you mention homebrew because that does actually remind me of a homebrew, something you would get in the homebrew competition. Maybe. But in a good way or a bad way, remember some of those beers are pretty good. Mostly bad, the thin, the thinness of it. Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to be barrel aged, but I mean, the barrel aging is trying to compete whatever, with whatever else is in there, and it's just not sort of pleasant on their own. Oh, it's a shame after the, the apricot wheat went off to such a good start, and I'm speaking relatively here. Um, all right, let's not even try it yet. You know what might improve it? Blending with the apricot. <laughs> Right. I don't know if we can try it, I don't think there's any left. Hmm. Has it actually seen some barrel time? I, it doesn't taste like... Oh, there is a, a hint of sort of woody vanilla in the background. I, yeah, you can put a little bit of artificial vanilla on that and make it taste the same. Yeah. Just, um, or even real vanilla, I feel. It's yeah. <laughs> surprisingly flat as well. Yeah, a little bit. Um, hmm, not really... No, I wouldn't drink it again. the struck match character, it wouldn't be that bad. I mean, <laughs> no, but it wouldn't just, go back for a second. There's no complexity, there's no depth. No. It's not like the apricot, it sort of just it should be more flavoursome, but it's it's not. It's yeah. just not bad. What's the ABV? Can we look at that? Six and a half. That's a lot of uh, sobriety points for a pretty boring beer. Yep. How many IBUs? Uh, it doesn't, doesn't make it said how many IBUs, does it? How many IBUs? 31. 31 IBUs. And there's 14 IBUs in the apricot. That probably has it tested too. <laughs> so it probably is 31, but it doesn't taste like it. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that, yeah, I don't really want to drink struck matches, to be honest. It's not very nice. I'm trying to finish it and see if anything mm -hmm. else comes out. It's almost a bit cold. Oh, all right, let's down the hatch. <laughs> <laughs> it's really sweet and uninteresting. Yeah. A little bit tasty. That's sad. I had high hopes for that. Yeah, it sounded, it sounded good on the bottle, but it did. I must prefer uh, the actual Port Noir. Yeah, yeah. Um, for those who don't know what we're talking about, uh, Hallitau, um up in Auckland had a, uh, a an original barrel-aged porter called Port Noir, and they were the ones who took out the trademark after DB released this. Um, and yeah, so hence the name change and uh, and why we were giving it some grief. Um, yeah, it could have been better. Could have been. Could have been a lot worse. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true too. Okay. Right. Enough on to that. the next one. Yeah, enough of that. On to the next one. Okay. Back once again with uh, Liberty Brewing Yakima Scarlet. I'm excited about this beer. Took two attempts to make it to, to me, and um, the second time succeeded, so I'm quite happy about that. There's a cat wandering past from the foreground. So is this made at um, Tuatara? You know, I didn't ask. Uh, I think it probably was. I suspect it probably is. Yes. Oh. That's some hops. I could smell it as it was pouring. It's big and sticky. Mm, resiny. So Joseph was quite um, adamant that this is not a red IPA, or an imperial red or anything like that. It's, he said he doesn't know what style it is and we're to enjoy it and comment on it as such. Um, I'll just put that down there. Actually, you might want to take that out of the sun. You can enjoy that. Oh, well, it looks it looks almost as good as Lion Red in the glass. <laughs> it's, um, it's almost fantastic. Yeah, almost. Beautiful um, off cream here, doesn't it? Just it's almost beige. Almost sort of. green from the hops there. Yeah, he's picked up a hint. Mm, it smells like oh. fresh hops. <laughs> <laughs> Big hops. A bit of candied malt there as well. Yeah. Um, well balanced. Well balanced. Mm. Yeah. I was really hoping that, you know, because I don't think I've done a negative one of these reviews so far, and I was really hoping that one of those beers would be absolutely awful to the point where it was tip it out, couldn't drink it, um, or that it was better than this. And really no, no offence, Joe. I mean, I was, you know, <laughs> you know I love your beers. Did you really think that was going to happen? No, I, no. Sadly, it's held to type again, and uh, the craft brewer wins Uber Alice. Very oily on the mouth, just like wow. poached your tongue mm. pops. I haven't got there yet, I'm still picking apart all the different hop <laughs> aromas. You better drink it before it skunks, though. It's 
What's the ABV on that one? 6.9. There you go. So it doesn't drink like it though. You can drink, I can drink that quite fast and get quite fast. There's a little bit of heat going down, but not in a bad way. Just, just letting you know it's there. Probably just all the hops. Better than throw it like chili would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of chili, are we going to finish this off with a chili shot? I'm not there. No, uh, oh, <laughs> you're more than welcome to. <laughs> we'll watch and laugh. No, it's, it's become very like everyone's doing it now. Where's the fun in that? <laughs> I, have, I have a mini a mini teaspoon of Dragon's Fury. <laughs> nah, screw that. I think we need to get oh. some little um, hop oil shots and do those instead. That'll we'll be the same reaction. Worse, same yeah. reaction. Yeah. <laughs> so what else are we going to say about this beer, guys? The malt complexity is amazing, mm. isn't it? I mean, there's just so much going on. I just can't. The, the amount of hop in there and the balance that it has is just. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know what the IBUs are, I don't think it says that on the bottle, but I mean, it's always down. such a subjective measure anyway, so mm -hmm. by the time you, you know, add in the malt. And a good well. pairing between the malt flavour and the hop character. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I would love this with a really dank blue cheese, mm. like, you know. Or even a strong, strong cheddar, an aged cheddar. Yeah, an aged cheddar, I think the hop, uh, yeah, it might be a little too hoppy for that, but you never know. That's what I love about cheeses, eh, you never quite know how they're going to match till you have them. And then they Unfortunately, they that's gone already. Oh really? <laughs> oh, mine's still no, hanging on. quick, very good. <laughs> mm. So we're going to put this in a box for Joe, or we're we going to, you know, tell him what the style is? Uh, could you? I have no idea. Come on, Mr. World Beer Cup, Joe. <laughs> American Strong Ale, somewhere around there, maybe, but too dark. Oh. Mm. Is it yeah, yeah, I would, I would like to give it a go. I mean, probably yeah. is, probably is a. Um, if you call it Imperial Red, Imperial Red. Though. Imperial red. Yeah. Uh, maybe not strong enough for Imperial Red. Yeah, no. A red IPA, yeah. something like that. Yeah. I would have thought too much malt for an IPA. Way too much. Anyway, this is precisely what he didn't want us to do. He was trying to <laughs> put it into a style. And no, you can't. It's a great beer. Drink um, it as it is. Drink it as it is. Interesting. Uh, in, oh, 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 God. I have been drinking. Yeah, interestingly. Well drink more. Drink more. <laughs> On the bottle, it, see, it talks about ageing this beer. That would be a really fun thing to watch. I don't know whether the hops would fall off, but I can see with a little bit of oxidation, it could become almost barley wine-like. Yeah, it would be. Absolutely yeah. would be barley wine with a bit of oxidation. Yeah. Mmm. I might go and get some and put it aside for Christmas. Just why with that put little it, bit. Why put it aside? It's drinking well now. Just yeah, I know. It's <laughs> <Just It'd> be <laughs> nice to have it on the table with, with a Christmas dinner. <laughs> Alright. Oh, that's us here from Awkward Beer Reviews. You know, we've got a, sh we've got a name for this shit now. It's just <laughs> random video blog, but now it's Awkward Beer, Beer Reviews. Reviews. That's good. <laughs> we've got a panel now. We've got yeah. a panel. Alright. From Phil, from Graham, from myself. Cheers and to your good health.